and the power of your resurrection and the fellowship of your suffering I want to know you oh praise God praise God worship team please come beloved I want to ask you tonight you know it is human to hear and agree and then promise yourself I will deal with that sometime I will deal with that sometime but I want to challenge you at this particular time could we cross this line today could we say to Jesus I want nothing not my theology not my riches not my ministry I want nothing let me say to you this I have had a few encounters in life whereby God would say stop there if you will not yield I'm not going forward with you in 1996 uh, the Lord sent me to Israel I was asking him questions about Uganda and he said go to Jerusalem I'll talk to you there I went to Jerusalem and he spoke to me about the woundedness of my nation and the blood guilt in this land and the deep deep pain that is in the land he said to me Go call your nation to repentance and reconciliation. Repentance, forgiveness, reconciliation. And if you will, if the nation will respond, I'll begin to heal your land. Go call them from the president down to the least. In every category of people, get representatives to come and spend 14 days in my presence repenting forgiving and reconciling I came back I thought I could do it I wrote a letter to the president. I had never been in any way near the president. Those were not my circles. But by faith I wrote a letter. And I sent it through the right channels. We waited for a response. No response came. I called pastors so that I can share with them we wrote letters to the pastors. We made a meeting. They did not come. Someone told us, if you want pastors to come, you have to provide lunch. We didn't have the money. We went to our small congregation, mainly made up of women who sold sweets on the streets, tomatoes and onions. They said we must raise this money for the sake of the kingdom. Let's do it. And they would bring money every evening before they go home or every morning before they go to work. They would bring the money. It says this money is for missions for what God is telling us to do. Some of them there's one woman I remember. She was selling sweets in the evening at the old car park. And she had her mat spread out with her little baby by her side. 
and she divided the sweets these are for God's work these are for the family onions these are for God's work these are for the family tomatoes and then when anybody came to buy anything she would say which one do you want and if everybody bought from this side she would bring all the money to the church and she would trust God for her family those were the people with whom we began this work they raised the money we made another meeting called the pastors we cooked that food for 300 pastors we got 20 we shared with them and they said we can't decide this we've got to call another meeting where all the pastors will come we made another meeting we raised more money cooked food for 300 we got 30 they told us we can't decide this we've got to call another meeting with all the pastors and we said we can't do this we cannot go back and collect money for food that is just thrown away so we said what do we do we said let us call the intercessors we sent out word across the nation to intercessors all across the nation we set a date on the 4th of october to come together and on that day from 10 a.m they began to arrive they began to come around two there were so many and they were all going into the building and starting to pray and i felt i need to go home i need to prepare i went back home and as i was praying for the night it was going to be an all night of prayer he said to me i'm not going with you i will not be with you he said i'll not be with you until you lay everything down and choose me as your only reward i prayed i thought i gave up everything and he kept saying i'm not going with you i was so tired i fell asleep on I fell asleep on my knees. In the evening around six, around eight, I was woken up. I dressed up. And I went back to town. The place was packed. People were even overflowing outside. I called some of you know brother Michael Chimuli I called him I said Michael sit there I still have something to finish with the Lord I went inside my office and I got down on my knees I said please Lord go with me this is what is you who called me to do this and he said to me, I'll not go with you. Because you have, I, you have things that you treasure more than you treasure me. I'll not go with you until you choose me. As your one reward. I was crying, crying. Then he said to me, 
Lay down your ministry. Do you know that you love the work more than you love me? You are willing to do anything for the work. You will do anything to keep that ministry. To protect the ministry. To build the ministry. You love the ministry more than you love me. Lay it down. I said, Lord, what does that mean? Does it mean I stop building the work? He said, no. But promise me, even if the enemy will strike the work, you will never turn away from me. Oh, my calling. Promise me that you will never choose the comfort of having a ministry above my name. It was not easy. I said, yes, Lord, I promise. He said, no. You've got to let go. You've got to let go in your heart. And I cried. And I prayed. And I pleaded. And I reached a point where I felt I've let go. And he said, give me your family. Give me your wife. Give me your children. I said, God, what does that mean? What does that mean? I said, promise me that whatever happens, you will never turn away from following me. Even if any of them is taken away, you will never turn away. Trust me with your with your family. That was hard. I struggled. I struggled. And I couldn't. And he said to me, this is for your own good. Anything you retain, is what the enemy will, is going to use to pull you down. You think you love them more than I love them. But if you don't give them to me, the enemy is, the enemy is going to use them to pull you away from me. By his grace, I came through to that. And then he said, Give me your name. You love your name. You love your reputation. You love to protect your image. You care a lot about what people think about you. Give me your name. I said, what does that mean? How do I do that? He said, promise me that from now onwards, you'll never defend yourself. It doesn't matter what people say. It doesn't matter what happens to you. You'll trust me with your name, with your reputation, with your image. I cried. I prayed. And I reached the point I said, okay, Lord, I give it. And he said, What if one day I let you? I let the enemy pull you down. What if you come into disgrace? What if everybody turns away from you? What if you're rejected? Do you promise to stand? I remember I reached a point. I didn't understand anymore. I was coiling into myself. I just cried and cried and cried. And I reached a point where I said, Take it all. Take it all. It means nothing. I don't want anything. Anymore. I 
And he said to me, Ask me anything. I'll give it to you. And I didn't understand. And he said, Ask me two things. And I promise you, I'll give them to you. And I asked him, I said, Father, you sent me to the nations. Give me the ability to love your people even when my nature would not love them. I said, give me a foothold in every nation where you send me. Give me an inheritance. Your word says ask me for the nations and I'll give them to you for an inheritance there was a long silence then he said go the people are waiting and I'll go with you And he said, this is what you will say to the people. I'm calling all of you to enter into a fast of 90 days. Without food. Don't you fear, I will take care of you. Only liquids. And in that fasting, I'm going to open up this nation to you. I'm going to open up the president. I'm going to open up the pastors. I'm going to open up the, the traditional churches. I'm going to open up the, the parliament. I'm going to give you a scepter over this nation. Call them to fast. And as many as yield anoint them tonight. I stepped out of that office and I took a bottle of anointing oil. I gave it to Brother Michael Chimuli. I said, Michael, go in there and stay in there until I call you out. And I walked from the office which was at the back like from there to come to the pulpit. I've never seen this and I've never seen it again. The people who were on the platform, I don't know what happened to them. As soon as I appeared at the back, everybody laid down what they were holding and they rushed away from the platform. And I was coming from there. And there was like a pillar pushing people back. The falling left and falling right. And I got to that platform. I began to share the prophetic word he had given me. And I was in tears and the people in tears. For over an hour. Then we called those who want to rise up and commit to the 90 day fast. Everybody rose up. I said, sit down, you don't understand. This is 90 days without food. And everybody rose up. We prayed that night, we anointed everybody. And the whole place was like full of slain bodies. People on their faces, weeping and groaning and crying. Until morning. I did not go back to, to home. I went to the office and slept in the office. I woke up around four, around 10 a.m. And I was amazed. There were messages. 
from people in different cities and different towns of Uganda asking we heard that a national fast has started can you give us information I said how did you know they said someone told us all day we were responding to people from Kabale, from Kisoro, from, from Kitgum, Gulu. They were sending messages. They were calling. We had the fast that started. And I knew this is the Holy Spirit. The whole nation was drawn into a fasting. We trained teams and we sent them out to go across the nation to speak out what God had spoken prophetically. Everywhere they went, they found people fasting. They found people really seeking God. I don't know how many people fasted, but I believe there were over 10,000. And then we started getting phone calls from pastors. We heard that there is a pastor's meeting. When is it? Where is it? At first we said, no, we, don't, we are not aware of any. But the phone calls were coming. And we realized God is moving ahead of us. So we rushed. Pastor Simeon had given us permission to use his place. We organized very quickly. And now we are sending out the information and pastors were calling saying, I'm coming, I'm coming. And it was supposed to be on a Saturday. On a Friday, I was ministering in the lunch hour. Someone brought me a note. And I, I ignored it. I continued speaking. And he came and said to me, they are waiting for an answer. They are on the phone. I said, who? He said, President's office. I said, what do, what do they want? He said, President wants to see you. Tomorrow. And I said, let me finish preaching. After preaching, I got all the information. They got that left a number, we called it. Saying the president wants to see you in his home, village home in Rakitura. Transport has been provided for you at the parliamentary buildings. You can go with one more person. You are expected for lunch there. But remember, the next day we are meeting pastors. So we got together in a little circle and we prayed. I said, God, what do we do here? And the God, God spoke. He said, stick with the pastors. So we had to reply to State House. We cannot make it. The next day went to the pastors. When they heard, they were furious. They said, how could you not go? But we had heard from him. The wisdom from above. We spoke with the pastors. They cried. And they vowed, we are going to do this. We are going to come together. We are going to organize together. That's one meeting we organized in so, with so many organizing committees. There were organizing committees in the Catholic Church, in the Anglican Church, in the Adventist Church, in the Presbyterians, the Baptists. There were organizing committees with parliamentarians, with business people. Everybody was organizing. People were offering, I will do this. I'll do that. We are being invited every day to the parliament, to military barracks, 
to judiciary courts, to all kinds of places. Come. Come and tell us about it. And when the time came, the crowds gathered. It was a beautiful sight. The Pentecostals there. There were nuns, Catholic nuns. There were Kola clergymen. There were generals sitting on one side. There were judges sitting on another side. There were people from every district of Uganda. And for 14 days, we cried to the Lord for the healing of our land to bring reconciliation amongst our people. It was in that meeting for the first time that the president came and took the flag of the nation and put it into our hands. As, as a prophetic sign that he is returning, surrendering the nation to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And that night, the Lord spoke to me and said, I've put this nation in your hands. You can determine where to take it. And tell my people, the future of this nation is in the hands of the church. You can determine where it goes. And he told me, prepare to go to the nations. What you asked me, I'm going to fulfill. Why am I sharing with you this? I want to build up your faith. When I look back now, and I see how many nations he has given me the grace to go to. When I hear lives changed, ministries born, when I see people who were high school students, today, some are pastors, some are in the marketplace. Some are in top places in the government. And you reach them and they, they call you, you are my spiritual father. You don't know me, but I used to come and sit there and we prayed. I can only say one thing. We serve a faithful God. We serve a faithful God. Today, I mentioned early, we need to cross a line. If God would say to you, I'll not go with you until you lay down everything. Examine your heart. Examine your heart and choose me. Choose me. Above your name, above your spouse, above your children, above everything. And you choose God, whatever happens, I'll not turn back. Whether fire or rain, I'll not turn back. I'm not saying that I've finished my surrender. In 2001, he spoke to me again and said, I want you to set yourself completely apart for me. But one thing I know, every level of surrender builds a new platform of authority. Amen. Today, I want to challenge you to cry out to God and say, Lord, I want total surrender. And it starts now. 